If you think the only difference between a Boeing 787 and an Airbus A350 is the logo on the tail, you are losing money every time you book a ticket. One of these planes is a profit-driven machine designed to squeeze efficiency out of every mile, and the other is a technological marvel that is physically redefining what comfort means. But in 2026, the gap between them has shifted. I'm gonna show you exactly why one of these jets is the future and why the other might just be a cramped nightmare in disguise. If you don't know which is which, you're playing a losing game. For the last decade, the aviation world has been a two-horse race. You have the American champion, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the plane that forced the world to ditch aluminum for carbon fiber. Then you have the European Challenger, the Airbus A350 XWB. Now, in 2026, the early production nightmares are over. The engine issues are fixed. It's no longer about which plane is safe. It's about which plane is superior. We are going to rip these two apart, category by category, from the fuselage construction and cabin pressure secrets to the cockpit philosophy and the cold, hard cash. By the end of this, you will know exactly who is the true king of the skies. Let's start with what you see at the gate. Visually, these machines are stunning, but they are built with completely different philosophies. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is physically smaller. The most common variant, the 787-9, is about 63 meters long. The giveaway is the wings. They are incredibly thin and flex upwards insanely high during flight, sometimes by 3 or 4 meters. It looks terrifying if you don't understand physics, but that flex is actually aeroelasticity acting as a massive shock absorber. Boeing builds the 787 fuselage using massive single-piece barrel sections. Imagine a giant spinning mold where robots wrap carbon fiber tape around and around until they have a solid tube. They bake it and boom, you have a fuselage. It's smooth, aerodynamic, and light because it uses fewer rivets. Now look at the Airbus A350. It is a beast. The A350-900 is nearly 67 meters long, and the massive A350-1000 is almost 74 meters. You spot an A350 instantly by the raccoon mask, that black outline around the cockpit windows. It looks aggressive. Construction-wise, Airbus did something smarter. Instead of one big barrel, they build the fuselage using four carbon fiber panels, top, bottom, left, and right, attached to a frame. Why does this matter? Because if a baggage loader crashes into the side of the plane, it is way cheaper to cut out and replace a panel than to fix a single-piece barrel. In 2026, maintenance crews absolutely love Airbus for this repairability. This is the part that actually affects your life. You are trapped in this tube for 14 hours. Which one is going to make you miserable? Boeing marketed the 787 as the Dreamliner because it was supposed to help you sleep. And they did change the game. Because the fuselage is plastic instead of metal, it doesn't rust. That means they can pump more moisture into the cabin. On an old plane, humidity is near zero. On a 787, it's around 15%. That stops your eyes from drying out. They also increased the cabin pressure. On a normal plane, it feels like you are at 8,000 feet. On a 787, it feels like 6,000 feet. That means more oxygen in your blood and fewer headaches. But Airbus matched all of that. The A350 has the same 6,000-foot cabin altitude and high humidity. Where Airbus wins is the geometry. The A350 is wider. The internal cabin width is 5.61 meters compared to the 787's 5.49 meters. That is a 5-inch difference. Here's the brutal math. Airlines put nine seats in a row on both planes. On the narrower 787, that means each seat is roughly 17 inches wide. That is tight. If you're a grown man, your shoulders will touch the stranger next to you. On the wider A350, those seats are typically 18 inches wide. That one inch is massive. You have personal space. Also, the windows. The 787 has those electronic dimmers. They look cool, but flight attendants can lock them. If the crew decides it's nighttime at 2 p.m., you're sitting in the dark. You have zero control. The A350 uses traditional pull-down shades. It's old school, but it means you control the light. Now we need to talk power. The Boeing 787 gives airlines a choice. You can buy it with General Electric GENX engines or Rolls-Royce Trent 10,000 engines. The GE engines are the favorite right now. 
They have those cool chevron sawtooth patterns on the back to reduce noise. The Rolls-Royce Trent 10,000 had a nightmare history of turbine blades cracking a few years ago. By 2026, those issues are fixed, but the reputation damage was done. Most airlines today lean towards the GE option for the 787. The Airbus A350 gives you zero choice. If you buy an A350, you're getting Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, period. But that's actually a good thing. The Trent XWB is arguably the most efficient large aero engine in the world right now. It didn't suffer the cracking issues that the Boeing engines did. It is a workhorse. For range, the A350 is the king. The A350-1000 is being used by Qantas for Project Sunrise, flying non-stop from Sydney to London. That is over 20 hours in the air. The 787 is fantastic, but it cannot haul a full load that far. If you need to fly halfway around the world without stopping, Airbus is the only option. If you are a pilot, the difference here is night and day. The Boeing 787 cockpit uses a traditional yoke. Even though it's fly-by-wire, meaning computers move the wings, Boeing programs the yoke to feel heavy. Their philosophy is that the pilot is the ultimate authority. If you want to pull back and stall the plane, the 787 will warn you. It will shake the stick, but it will eventually let you do it. The Airbus A350 uses a side stick. There is no yoke in front of you, which frees up space for a pull-out table. Pilots love this for eating or doing paperwork. Airbus uses flight envelope protection. If you pull the stick all the way back and panic, the computer will refuse to stall the plane. It will hold the nose at the maximum safe angle and ignore you if you try to go further. Boeing fans say, I want to fly the plane. Airbus fans say, I want the plane to save me if I screw up. In 2026, the A350 also has a slight edge in runway safety tech with systems that automatically break if the pilot tries to land long or if the runway is too short. Here is the one detail that airlines care about more than legroom, the cost. In 2026, the list price for a Boeing 787-10 is hovering around $338 million. The Airbus A350-1000 is listed at roughly $366 million. So on paper, the A350 is more expensive. It's a bigger, heavier, more capable plane. But here's the catch. The Boeing 787 is lighter. Because the 787-9 is physically smaller and lighter than the A350-900, it burns less fuel on shorter, long-haul routes. If you were flying New York to London about seven hours, the 787 is the efficiency king. You aren't dragging extra structural weight through the sky. That is why the 787 is so popular. It hits the middle market perfectly. It's the Toyota Camry of the skies, reliable, efficient, and good enough for most jobs. However, the A350 holds its value better. Used A350s are in high demand. Early model 787-8s have dropped in value because they're too small for many major airlines now. Let's address the drama. Boeing went through hell from 2020 to 2024 with production halts. They had issues with fuselage gaps that forced them to stop deliveries for over a year. By 2026, Boeing claims this is sorted, but it frustrated a lot of loyal customers. Airbus had its own drama with the peeling paint saga, where paint was crocking on the A350s. They fixed it by changing the copper foil material in the fuselage, so in 2026, that issue is gone. Currently, the A350 generally has a slightly higher dispatch reliability. It breaks down less often at the gate. The 787 is a very complex electric airplane, and those complex systems can be finicky. So who wins the war in 2026? If you are an airline accountant looking for the most efficient tool to move people across the Atlantic, you buy the Boeing 787. It is lighter, cheaper to buy, and incredible on fuel for standard routes. But if you are a passenger, the Airbus A350 is the clear winner. The wider cabin means 18-inch seats instead of 17 inches. The quietness is unmatched. The vertical sidewalls give you more shoulder room. It feels like a premium product. Boeing built a plane for the airlines. Airbus built a plane for the passengers. Subscribe for more.